Okay, we're here at the Jive headquarters. Brian and David, the Senior Vice President of Engineering for Jive, and David, the entrepreneur from Proxima Labs. You guys are announcing an acquisition uh, here today. Or actually, it's technically tomorrow we're on the inside, so uh, can you uh, share with us the, the news? Yeah, so we're very excited to uh, announce the acquisition of Proxima Labs by Jive Software. You know, what we're trying to do with Jive is to change the way work gets done. And so what we've been focused on is trying to think about the future of the work. And work for us in the future is about being personalized, about being focused on what you're doing, how you're doing it. And so in order to do that, we've taken some concepts that have been pioneered in the enterprise space, things like the social graph that Facebook has been pushing, and saying, how does that apply in an enterprise context? So what's been interesting for us is to say, you know, a social graph in the enterprise context is not just about uh, what, you know, who you're friends with, it's who you're collaborating in the office, across offices, and also who you're collaborating with your partners, your vendors, and your customers. And there's so much data and value locked in those relationships, in that web of graph of relationships, that really goes unused by enterprises. And we want to help figure out how to pull that out. And the other area that we've been very excited about is about big data in general. You know, people have been using large scale, diverse data sets in real time to do analysis to bring the right set of uh, recommendations to people in the consumer space. And if you think about all that effort that goes into just getting you the right advertisement or the right recommendation about music, it's a real shame it's not getting put to use to help get some real productive work getting done. So at Jive, we started to work on that set of uh, technology, and we built a first-pass recommendation engine in, in our product, and that comes out in our next release in, at the end of Q2. But what happened for us is we realized we were just scratching the surface in terms of the value that we could bring to bear. So what we needed was a set of experts that had the scientific as well as the engineering background to do the deep social network analysis as well as scale these systems to the scale that we, were, we wanted to achieve. And we ended up going out and looking at 50 different companies, and there's, a, there's dozens of companies out there that are doing analytics engines for e-commerce, but Proximal was unique in that they were the only guys doing this for real work around the enterprise. So that was very exciting to us because they were about getting stuff done. So we started to work with them, we became a customer of them, we fell in love with them, and now we got married. <laughs> so now we're together. So, so Proximal Labs, um, talk about the team. You, it's uh, David. It's, it's me, Dave Gatelius, um, coming on as Chief Social Scientist. Uh, it's my co-founder, Lance Rydell, uh, and also Nige Daly. Uh, and Nige will be known in the Hadoop com uh, community as the current release manager for the Hadoop, uh, next Hadoop release. So yeah, super excited to, to be coming on. So actually on the heels of the Cloudera's announcement today about uh, you know extending their lead in Hadoop, and of which we got to know each other, David and, and uh, uh, Nigel, and, uh, and your co-founders, is, is Cloudera is pioneering. You guys were part of Cloudera Labs, which is a little absurd. But you've only been a startup for how many months now? And you, the acquisition, you guys are the shortest acquisition, uh, shortest startup in the history of, of big data. How, how many months were you actually a, a startup? Well, we were, we were live for nine months. So, yeah, it would have been nine months, I think, uh, March 1st. <laughs> so Jive, obviously, you're scouring the landscape. These guys pop out. I mean, they're not no strangers to technology. I mean, in the, in the day of the internet bubble we're living in now, Twitter, uh, you know, all these companies going crazy. You know, there's a lot of flash in the pan. You can throw up cloud, throw some Ruby on Rails front ends, and, and count how many times someone retweets, and that's, that's an influence ranking, right? So it's pretty trivial to code these days, some basic stuff, but it's real tech involved. So you guys have a, a background in computer science. Can you talk about specifically why Proc Proximal was ripe for you guys. Besides a team, I know it's a small team, so it's a talent acquisition, um, and and you guys are going public. So you know, talk about the uh, you know the, the obviously going public. You need to have your scalable revenue model, um, and this is technology will help you get there. So talk about why Proximal was so significant for you, and what this means for your next gen product. Yeah, I think it's interesting. And you start off by mentioning that there's a bubble, and you know, from our perspective. Yes, there seems to be some fairly substantial valuations in the social space, but if you look at what's happening in the enterprise right now, what you're finding is people really are changing the way they work, and these technologies really add a lot of value. And at Jive, we've been in the business of selling software, unlike some of our competitors who give this stuff away. And we have you know, 3,000 customers that pay a lot of money to be able to use the software because it gives massive productivity gains. But we see that that's, again, just scratching the surface. Because when you think about the amount of data that's locked up in the enterprise that's available on the social web, 
you think about the number of people in a 10,000 person organization that don't know what's happening from one side to another, there's massive opportunities to reduce waste and increase productivity. So we really wanted to make sure we got the best and brightest set of people we can to help us tackle these problems because we really see that there's a revolution in how work can get done if we do this properly. What was the big thing about these guys that got your attention besides the core team? I mean, obviously, from a technology standpoint. Yeah, I think from a technology standpoint, they had worked and scaled at places like Yahoo Systems that scaled up to you know thousands and thousands and thousands of users. I think the other thing is that Dave himself had a background, you know, kind of had the academic background in you know, social science. And that's something that's lacking in a lot of these companies, and it was lacking at Jive. And we were really happy to have that scientific background as well as that core engineering scalability background. Great, we, of course, Silicon Angle, our motto is where computer science meets social science, so obviously we're interested in, in this kind of topic. So talk about the, um, the complexities of social graph in particular. Obviously, you're on the enterprise side, you sell to large enterprises, but the big trend is the consumerization of IT, is, and IT as a service, as they say, but really the consumerization where people want an experience on their enterprise that's similar to the web. And, um, you know, when you're in a forum from a big company or you're a, a tier one customer, sometimes you're not really getting some of the signal or even maybe you're getting too much noise from the outside market. So users want this seamless experience where they want to take advantage of their relationships, their social relationships, but also they have a work reality. And they, they, that's always been blurred. But now we're all online. So how does that translating into product? And what are some of the tech? David, uh, Brian, you want to comment on that at all? Yeah, so from a technology perspective, of course, the, the, there is great potential in bringing together sort of the best and brightest in computer science and the social sciences. And so approximately what we were able to do is bring together kind of the best of both worlds, best of breed in both worlds, and create this sort of dream team of big data guys, social an, uh, you know, anal you know, analysis, and machine learning into one package. And so being able to do that over petabytes size data sets of real time information and being able to mine those large social graphs for data that others were missing was a real opportunity we thought the marketplace was just missing. So we hit it big and, and we hit it right. Um, the, 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 the challenge in the enterprise space is a bit different than I think the, the general web, right? So lots of recommendation engines out there, you know, science projects, trying to figure out how to push pro products, basically, and, and advertisements at people. What if you were able to tackle a much more complex set of problems for users in that enterprise space? We're trying to get things done. We're trying to collaborate in meaningful ways with others. It's a different sort of problem, and so that's really the difference that we took in kind of designing our system to pay attention to those differences. And we found that if we could do that, and if we could do that at great scale, the value we could provide to our customers um, was tremendous. So is the, is the obviously acquisitions, talent acquisition, the main team members, but they did have some IP, is there was some IP involved? Okay, um, so you mentioned big data. So you guys are living and breathing the pioneering of, of social with, with Jive and, and the enterprise and dealing with all the same issues that Facebook and Twitter are dealing with, just a little bit different construct to it. Um, what is your definition of big data? Yeah, I think at, at the highest level, it's any data that doesn't fit inside of a database. It's a large, petabyte-scale, diverse data set that you're working on in real time. And that's, that's pretty much the standard definition. How that plays out in Jive's context is the diverse set of data sources are not just kind of click information like it might be at a Facebook or a Yahoo or kind of the information that you're, what you're reading and browsing. Those are part of it. But for us, it's also large sets of documents inside the enterprise a data from an enterprise application that you might have. There might be event queues of things that are happening in your supply chain that matter to you, as well as what's happening in Twitter on the social web, as well as data such as data from analysts, prospectus feeds, all of those kinds of things that people use to get business and, and make things happen. I mean, I'm speculating that you guys are going to go public. Obviously, you're doing very well. We know about uh, Yammer's, Yammer's doing well. I met, interviewed those, the CEO there as well. Um, but. In the next evolution of Jive, where do you see the product going? This is kind of the final question, because the big data play makes sense. You have to be a core competency in big data if you're going to solve these problems, yeah. <laughs> and there's some real science involved. But roadmap-wise, can you just talk about the challenges and where Jive's going uh, with this acquisition? Sure. So with this acquisition, what we really want to do 
is take our basic recommendation engine that ships with Jai 5 at the end of this quarter and incrementally roll that out. That's a SaaS service for us. So what we, people are going to see, our customers are going to see, is as they adopt Jai 5 over the next year, recommendations will become much more focused and targeted. The quality of those recommendations will increase dramatically. In addition, people will be able to feed information into that recommendation engine to include data feeds like these external data sources, like feeds from enterprise applications. Beyond that, we've, had, we've been working with some companies that have very interesting ideas of how they want to feed recommendations to their employees. For example, they want to be able to help prepare their employees for where their job is going. So if they know that they'll be moving into a new space, they can add to the recommendation engine content that's going to educate them and get them ready for their job. Other folks have said they want to take some of their top performers and use that data to drive the organization and say, hey, I want to take what my best and brightest guys are doing and up-level the rest of the organization with it. So with the proximal acquisition, it allows us to take these external data feeds as well as internal state-of-the-art stuff and make it happen. Well, congratulations, uh, guys, on the announcement, and congratulations on the acquisition to your team. You guys are a fantastic bunch of guys. Uh, couldn't have been uh, to a better group of, of engineers and entrepreneurs. Too bad uh, you guys couldn't get out there and get your own company up there. We're rooting for you. But this is a great exit. Everyone's happy. Um, so thank you very much.